Japanese medicine has been published. The digital volume brings together various herbal medicines, diagnostic techniques and prescriptions. Traditional Chinese medicine, also known as TCM, comes out of centuries of trial and observation. The digital encyclopedia provides a comprehensive, though technical, look. It encompasses the psychology of Chinese medicine and therapy and such treatment methods as acupuncture, herbs, and diet, as well as multiple ancient books relating to TCM practices. All are illustrated with detailed descriptions and video presentations. The Chinese Academy of Traditional Medicine began the Mammoth Project 10 years ago. The aim is to protect the TCM intellectual property rights and reaffirm its status as an important national heritage. The publisher says, TCM theory, which originated thousands of years ago through meticulous observation of nature, the cosmos, and the human body, has a language all its own. The book aims to make it easy to understand. The book also introduces a way for those somewhat incomprehensible culture concepts to be put to very practical use. If we help interpret the TCM classical works into easy-to-understand language, it will reach more people and they could get a better idea of how matters in their livelihood were explained by their ancestors. At the launch in Beijing, the publisher donated several editions to appreciative institutions, including the Confucius Institute Beijing headquarters, the traditional pharmacies Tongren Tang and Yusheng Tang. The readership spans from anyone seriously interested in learning about Chinese medicine to colleges with TCM majors to hospitals as a guide to prescribing. Ma Shuo, CCTV. Now, a museum dedicated to stones inscribed with Buddhist sutras will be built in the Fangshan district of Beijing. Local officials have announced the foundation lay-in ceremony will be held on June the 23rd inside the Yuanju Temple. The 1300-year-old temple was built in the Tang Dynasty. Over 1,100 plates of stone inscriptions of sutra are stored there, spanning all the dynasties from the Tang to the Ming. And a show of ethnic dances has been staged at the Tianjiao Theater in Beijing. The performance comes in the lead-up to China's fourth National Cultural Heritage Day. The drum dance of the Jinua ethnic group set the beat on Friday night. The gigantic drum place center stage is a traditional sacred symbol of the life-giving sun for the minority in the southwestern province of Yunnan. Also on show is the tradition from the far-flung steppes of North China's Inner Mongolia, the routines have grown out of the daily practices and nomadic local life over the centuries. The Mongolians are known as a people on horseback, and their generous spirit is reflected in their dances. The Qiang people of southwest China's Sichuan province have brought an ageless dance epic. They are accompanied by the striking beauty of the multi-part vocals. The dance is based on an ancient folk story about the origins of the Tiang. The show features over 200 artists, ranging in age from 11 to 78. Their passionate originality took the audience on a voyage of 13 ethnic cultures. Lori Liu, CCTV. And beginning in June, some big steps towards cross-street cultural exchanges have taken place. It was announced that the Taipei Palace Museum would loan a group of priceless cultural relics to the mainland for a show in Beijing. It's the first time in 60 years treasures from both sides of the Taiwan streets will reunite. And now, let's get more details. The show is scheduled to open in October. Entitled Dilemma of a Monarch, it will offer a comprehensive presentation of Emperor Yongzheng. The third emperor of the Qing dynasty is known for his consolidation of the bureaucracy of the vast nation. Among the nearly 200 antiques to be showcased are the emperor's portraits, imperial seals, and manuscripts. During a meeting in Beijing earlier this year, the two institutions agreed to meet for a seminar on an annual basis. 
Both of us have entertained such wishes. Actually, what matters is not the antiques loaned. It is the intentions that really count. It is a great boost for our exchanges. As the Chinese Civil War drew to a close at the beginning of 1949, the Kuomintang brought nearly 3,000 boxes of ancient treasures from the Beijing Palace Museum to Taiwan. The selected antiques accounted for about a quarter of the whole collection of the Forbidden City. Lori Liu, CCTV. And at the National Art Museum of China in Beijing, an exhibition entitled Silent Call is underway. The retrospective show is a celebration of the 50-year career of Jia Youfu as a painter. The exhibition presents the difficult experiences Mr. Jia has gone through, as well as the great achievements he made during the course of his study, exploration and promotion of Chinese landscape painting. Jia Youfu believes in infusing painting with philosophy so as to enlarge the interpretive space of his landscapes. His works have influenced many international artists with their unique characteristics, lofty landscape spirit and accurate depiction of the times in which he paints. In the past 50 years, Jia Youfu has held three solo art shows at the National Art Museum of China. The pieces being shown in his current exhibition offer a richer and more diversified selection of his work than have ever been seen before. And Shanghai rolled out the red carpet for the 12th edition of the Shanghai International Film Festival on Saturday. The annual festival is the Chinese mainland's biggest celebration of international and domestic films. The Shanghai International Film Festival is set to run from June the 13th to 21st. During the nine-day event, 16 films will compete for the coveted Jinjie Award given to the best film in the festival. A movie by Chinese director He Ping started off the festival. He presented the historical action drama Weeds for the first time on Saturday. Weed is the director's first film in six years and has been eagerly awaited in China. He Ping says he hopes the audiences will enjoy his new film after such a long hiatus. I feel I can do it and the time is right. I have also found actors that I'm very satisfied with, so we started doing this film. Of course, perhaps I took a long time, but now the film is complete and I feel it is important for the audience and the media to examine it. <laughs> Set against the backdrop of the decisive battle of Changping in 260 BC, Wheat tells the story of women left behind in the state of Zhao during the Warring States period in ancient China. <laughs> Wheat is expected to become a Chinese blockbuster when it is released later this month. The movie cost some 6 million US dollars to make. Watch it, CCTV. Now, country music artist Charlie Allen is ecstatic to be opening the uh, Bonaru Music Festival in Manchester, Tennessee. He will be joined by an array of stars across the musical spectrum. In its eighth year, Bonaru is arguably the biggest music festival in the U.S. It's spread out across six stages, so a single act rarely stands out much. And it also boasts a comedy tent, an arcade, and a disco. About 80,000 people are expected to attend this year. It is. Bonnaroo is a lot of fun. I mean, uh, great music. I mean, you meet all, all kinds of people. You just never know who you're going to meet there. You don't really know how to react. You just know you got to go out there and, and do the best you can and perform the best you can and pour your heart out to them. Besides Highliners, Fish and Bruce Springsteen, there are more than 100 other performing acts. Among them, the Beastie Boys, David Byrne, Nine Inch Nails, Wilco, Al Green, Snoop Dogg, Elvis Costello, and TV on the radio. The music festival begins on Thursday and continues through Sunday night. Xiang, CCTV. With beauty and grace, local flavor and wit.
Folk operas have entertained Chinese for a thousand years. This June, Culture Express brings the most popular folk operas into your living room. Catch a glimpse of the rich genres and loyal guardians of China's supreme stage art. The Chinese folk opera series, this June on Culture Express.